musician loves honey and I am the musician. I'm not giving that up. I don't know how you're going to pull that off because I need to hear you sing for that first. Oh, you already heard me singing. Right? I heard you. Yeah, I heard you singing. You didn't even realize it, which shows if you tried, you probably stink up the place. <laughs> so we guys got to just blindfold That's you. That's what you called me last, the last time on Facebook. I sure did. Yeah, you did. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna type, girl. You, you are. I'm real with mine. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm uh -huh. all about it. That's right. That way, JC can't come in here and get crazy on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the You're rainbow fine. on for myself. <laughs> all right. Anyway. All right. We, we got the fourth segment to get goofy. Let's get our guest here. And this man here, I've known him for a few years now. When I first got started into this, he's been very kind to me. It's been an honor to have him on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, treasure right here on, on This is Love, Honey. Thank you for taking the time to see us, my Thank friend. Thank you, Treasure. Is right. that how you pronounce your for, your name, Treasure? You no, know, it's, it's spelled T R E apostrophe S U R E, and you would probably say that Treasure, but most people. We're Can I call you Tre? Yeah. They say Tre Treasure. Right. I'll call you Tre. Tre. You will call say Tre. Whatever yeah. works for you. All right. Well, whatever. All right. That's Trey. cool. Hi, Just, Trey. Hi, Dre. Uh, hey, Hi, Dre. Hi, Hi, bro. Hi, oh dude. Okay, see, no, you you way you way too uh, rapalicious to try to get try to get homie like that. Way too rapalicious. Oh, I can rap too. You, I've heard you rap. <laughs> right. Please don't. Hey. Please do not. Uh, please do not unwrap that. All right. <laughs> Let that ride. All right. But anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to get a musician. She's trying to get, you know what? Uh, you, you will have the best job in the world of being the groupie of the musician. Outside of that, I don't know what, what to tell What does that mean, groupie of the musician? Well, we'll we could talk about that later. All right, so check this out. <laughs> Sir, I know you've been in the game for a long time. And for those who don't know, this dude has been in the game for, I don't even want to date you like that. So I'll, I'll let you do that. You know, no, at least, at least no, to some extent. It's, it's, it's no shame in my game, you right? Know, but I, you know, because when I when I'm performing, and when not when I look at younger people in the audience, and they look at me and they see me jump up in the air or kick and split, right? And then you can I tell, jump in the air, and then I, <laughs> he does with two feet. Though. Two feet. Okay. He does do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I when I do things and when I'm doing the splits and things like that, and they go like, "Wow, I wonder how is that guy?" Because you could tell that I'm seasoned, but mm -hmm. I'm I don't look ancient, ancient. Right. But I've been in the business fifty years. Fifty years. Oh mm. my God, how old are you? Seventy. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 she, she, I look she real cold. Good. She cold, uh, man. She I, I, cold. If I was, if I was, if I was seventy, I really look good for she seventy. She cold with it. No, I've been doing it since I was ten years and I'm old. Just kidding. Right. Since I was ten years old. You know, you know, I'm I just kidding, young. right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> Could have said eighty-five. He was like, I said, I'm a sexy eighty-five baby. Yeah. Uh, right. No, I just turned sixty last month. Congratulations, you, oh man. Oh my Happy God, birthday. you look young, way younger than that. Honestly, yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. I'm not, that's why I was like surprised when you said 50 years yeah. old. Right. Right? So, uh, what made you initially get into music? Well, yeah, I don't know if you know, I, I come from a home, uh, town called Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Dayton, Ohio now is known as the land of funk. They actually have the funk museum there. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta and go there. Even though everybody knows James Brown was pretty soulful, funky, doing what he does. James what? James Brown. Brown. Oh, okay. Hit me, you know. <laughs> yeah. She's but a white it, girl. She don't know. But, She's a white girl but, in the Asian lady's body. She don't know. But really, the funk really became recognized through the Ohio players. Right. Skin tight, fire, all of that. Oh my God, um, from Dayton, Ohio, as well as many. And from that, a lot of funk groups started to come out of that area. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, it was either on Saturday morning, instead of watching cartoons, or after the cartoons, you look outside, you see nothing but young kids and teenagers up and down the street carrying horns, guitars, right. pulling drums and little red wagons, going there because we all wanted to be like the Ohio players and some of the other music that we heard. But mainly, right. the Ohio players opened the door to the funk scene. I was Ohio one of those players kids. in regards to like a man player kind of thing, like this man, or like a like a that, football player. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, go ahead. I'm, I'm you. I'm just, no, yeah. no, but they but they uh they opened the door they opened the gates for the funk music and, mm -hmm. and we all wanted to be like that. And it just it was already so many talented musicians in our hometown. And I was one of those young kids that, you know, 
sisters older than me, six, seven years older than me, and they're in high school, and their friends were all in bands and in very established uh, young groups. And so I would always like to like show out for them when right. they come to the house hanging out because my sisters were cheerleaders. You know, yeah. Everybody wants to hang out at our house. Uh -huh. So they would pay me 50 cent or a dollar to do James Brown in the living room as a kid, you know, wow. I'm doing little things, little splits yeah. and everything. And it, it started from there. I started my first band at 11 and um, self-taught myself at 12 years old, 12, 13, play guitar, bass, drums, keyboards and everything. Nice. And I just continued to pursue it from that point on the rest mm. of my life, you know. But uh, And it's, it's taken me all over the world while I was in the military as well. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you for your service. Yeah, what branch? You. Army, 26 Army. years. I was a former drill sergeant. Did you ever play in the military? I played music most of my career. Have you, yeah, have you seen these military um, uh, seniors that they play? All of, I was in the first All Army Soldier Show in 1984. I was mm. the first soldier selected for the very first world touring show. Wow. wow! Yes, I seen it. I seen it. Uh, yeah. Well, my ex boyfriend that he's talking about is actually in the Air Force. <laughs> right. So um, I, I am. I, I felt the like I'm in the blues. military. Huh? They're the tops and blues in the Air Force. Okay. The Army is the All Army Soldier Show. The, you guys are together, and Navy and Marine are together, right? Now let me ask this because this is the interesting thing about him. Um, in the '70s and the early '80s, and he's told me about this. So, and he was in his band called LTD. So my question Limited. is. Well, it's not not exactly, not that. Oh. But uh, were you still in the armed forces while you were in that in that group? No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't get picked up by LTD until twenty eleven. Okay. Now everybody knows the history of LTD. The, that uh, they had a lot of uh, string of hit songs with mm -hmm. Jeffrey Osborne as the lead singer. Right. Uh, and. Um, for years after he left, he went on and did solo, became solo a solo artist and mm -hmm. successful. And LTD kind of went on a hiatus for a minute. But then it, once they started to try to get back out there, uh, I was introduced to a guy who um, was interested in them finding a, a new lead singer. Mm -hmm. And they selected me. I was, I was with them for, what, almost six years. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to tour all over the country with them. Right. Uh, I was sought after by the Bar Kays, many other people, and um, and I've encountered a lot of musicians from my hometown and other bands who was interested in me fronting them or being a part of their band. But I love being my own solo in yeah, the yeah. brand, so to speak. I obviously I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get that. Not for not for. Not yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. Yes, LTD. I guess, yeah, I oh, right, right. Now, uh, now, 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 just real quick, because because we have various ages. Let's just, just tell people who LTD was or is. That way, people can understand real quick. Yeah. So, for 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 the younger groups, if you go back and listen to some of the old R and B, they were a big band, probably close to ten members, horns, the whole nine yards. Uh, they they're most famous for. Their song "Back in Love Again." Mm -hmm. Every time I move, I lose. When right. I look, I'm in. Right. And their most popular song that they did, I do it in my show now. Uh, that was one of the most requested. Is a song called "Love Ballad." Okay. Oh, so you have a show. This douche plays all over. Oh, show. Sure. Okay. Right. He plays show. all over now. But this is this. What's interesting is. Oh, excuse me. That's my phone. My fault. Okay, you have right. to turn it. Yeah, oh. I'm, that's my fault. I take advantage. I'll, I'll take that. What's interesting about it is when he when we met, obviously I saw him doing his thing, and he's a high energy guy, bounces, jumps around, and then he saw me play eventually, and saw that I was a similar type of performer, and we didn't. I mean, obviously he respected me just as a young dude coming up and everything else, and I obviously obviously yeah. it was easy to respect you, bro, because yeah. yeah. you know because your stuff is is hot. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he, oh, him as a performer, it's is hot. high energy. Oh, okay. So he, he, I thought you were right. About hot. What I mean is, well, yeah, but his energy is high. His band is tight. He puts on a great show. He stays in his lane because he knows what he's comfortable with, and he kills it every time he plays. But what I loved about him more than anything else is that every time I talked to him, he always made time to talk. He always had time to give me advice. He had time to keep me up, and you know. Uh, motivate me, things like that, and it's always been very helpful. So it's it's very cool because now when they talk about high energy people 
in the R and B or just performance period, I'm in the same conversation with this, which is which is humbling to say the least. <laughs> you know, I always tell tell everybody it's enough for everybody, and it's really about you uh, respecting mm -hmm. the music, knowing who you are, right? Own your craft, right? And be strong, steady, and consistent, right? Anybody can have a good day. Mm -hmm. You said something about me that, that, that you were absolutely right about, about the consistency. That's what it's about. Right. Anybody can have a good day. Right. What's your batting average mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. That's right. You know, if you're going to that, have a good a, hit a good and then the rest of the time, rest of the season, you suck, it means nothing. Exactly. <laughs> if you're steady, your average stays high, peaked, mm -hmm. you know, you're 10 and you're 9, you're 9 and a half, then you're 8 and a half, then you're 9 and you're right. 10. You stay up there. When you drop down to twos and threes, you might want to reassess yourself so, and, and yeah. look at applying for that job at Walmart. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that's come down to our topic, which is goals, you know, right. with, with goals. Uh, where uh, we are not like uh, directly talking about our topic goals, but whatever we're, ta uh, we're talking about our, um, our journey in life, journey and right. our career is part of the goals. Okay, well, yeah. considering we a lot of stuff that you've accomplished and where you're at presently, Obviously, you've accomplished a lot. So now, when you assess and make new goals, what are the things that you look for? You know, one of the things I, I have to, I can't ignore the music because it's a gift that God gave me. So it's always going to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I call the music my ministry. Okay. You know, and it's something I'm able to share with my kids and grandkids no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so I just pray that God allow me to always be that role model, you know, and, and, and sharing and sharing everything I do musically, which transcends to who I really am. Right. You know, we, a lot of people don't even know who they are or what they're meant to be or do. Right. I do. And I could just share that because there's always a positive story in it of um, consistency, persistence, right. passion, mm -hmm. create creativeness, and I, I've, I've lived it all my life. So I, I don't have time to be jealous or envious or hate on someone because I own what I am, right. you know? And that's what I say, just you don't worry about you can admire the people. You can admire me. I can admire you. But the thing is, is you take that and you be the best you that you can be. Same thing I share with my band. Right. But my goals in life is all is to continue to do what I'm doing as long as God will allow me. Make good original music. Mm -hmm. Share it with, uh, with, with people and really with people younger than me, with the right. kids. I have a granddaughter who plays... Uh, piano man and she's incredible and this, watching those things is what the things that choke you up yeah you know I'm sitting at the uh, at the piano with her a few months back and she's playing she's 12 years old just mm -hmm. turned 12 and she's playing Stevie Wonder nice at the piano for me and right. then she's playing Usher and I'm singing with her right you know that's those beautiful. things man you're just, that's just beautiful yeah she lives with you or is no she lives she lives in Colorado uh, mm -hmm. You know that treasure is uh, I love the uh, the things that you said and um, well I am putting together in one word whatever you're saying is passion. Yeah, passion absolutely. in your heart. Yeah. That's it. That's mm. that's it starts from there. I tell the band that don't worry about the money. I'm not saying don't worry about the, the money. money. Yeah. It, you know when you you, need if, that. <laughs> you gotta be, feel comfortable where you're working, who you're working with. I will never cheat a musician mm. because I know what it it is to be a musician. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've given up money and, and done shows and not getting paid, but made sure my musicians got paid. Right. I've done that several times because of the passion. But you know what? God continues to reward me. Mm -hmm. I continue to work. I continue to make, to get gigs, some pay better than others. Right. And, and get recognized. You just got to take, don't think every blessing is just something that, that, that the whole world has to see. Right. You have to know it. Mm -hmm. That when you've been blessed, I'm gonna give you a quick little quick story, real quick. I was in the army for 26 years, traveled all over the world. I was gung ho, wanted to go airborne. They lost the paperwork. I was a drill sergeant three years. I was retired first sergeant. Did all these incredible things. Was ready to go to war, fight for my country. I came on. I came on the manifest 
to go to combat about six times. All six times, someone higher pulled me off the manifest to train soldiers to go. Therefore, after 26 years, I never had to go to combat. Mm. So I came out unscathed, still healthy, seen a lot of things, did a lot of things, but God covered God it. God has me. a purpose right. for A you. purpose for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I say this is my ministry. My point to that is, is I know how life is and how conscious is. He did not want me to witness what a lot of other people witness. Right. Mm -hmm. You would not see that same entertainer you probably see on stage now. Right. I would be there. I would be doing the job, but I would kind of still be kind of like in a right in that place. haze based yes, on some yeah, of those experiences. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't unthink unsee that. that. You can't unsee it. Right. Can't unsee it. I didn't have to see it. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Yep. There you that's go. Your, yes. That's cool. your. That's what you are designed for. This yeah. man has always been a motivation to me, and he's always been a motivation to a lot of people. And of course, I have to put this up here because he talked about his original music as well. And I would be remiss, of course, to talk about that right there. So for everyone out there, and uh, please tell them your website where they can get your dates and your music and everything you got, my friend. Okay, right now this this CD we just we just printed. This has four singles from my soon to be released twelve CD uh, tre hashtag Treasure for the Record. Uh, the first single on there is Get It Girl. It's been very popular. I perform it live, and people love it. Uh, there, the songs are not available online yet. We're, we're waiting to get the whole CD out there, but we are selling hard, hard copies at, at our gigs, at our shows. All right. Look us up, www.dreamstonellc.com. Find out more. That's and right. Uh, what, shows, uh, what are your shows in town? Oh, this weekend I'm at um, Arizona Charlie's on Boulder Friday, Arizona Charlie's on Decatur on Sunday, and Gordon Beer's... Uh, Brewery on, uh, I mean, Gordon Birch, Gordon Birch Brewery on Sunday, uh, Arizona Charlie's Decatur Saturday. We just finished doing a concert Saturday, this past Saturday, in Ontario, California, with uh, Evelyn Champagne King. Beautiful. Yeah, great show, great turnout. Evelyn, Bay. <laughs> right, right. She's an R. Yes, she's she's an R. B. Singer. Yeah, okay. you're right. She's an R. B. Singer. I'm sorry, yeah, right. She, she, she. she, she she all, all she knows is the is, is the rock songs with all them all the all the white guys she's been dating yeah. for the years. She it's okay, girl. You go, go look her up. We gonna learn. We gonna learn you. It's all right. Evelyn Champagne King. Go yep. look her up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna look. Yeah, her. Shame. Yeah, that all that stuff. Yeah. But love come down. Ooh, you make my love come down. down. You'll like that one. Yeah. Right, you'll like that one. Yeah. Right. There's no love songs. And heartbroken songs to it. Okay? Then you'll never listen all to R&B. <laughs> you'll never listen to R&B <laughs> because it's all that stuff. You know, okay. it's a combination. Can you, can you have something like uh, like upbeat so I can I can? It'll be an upbeat. Uh, it'll be up upbeat song about love. Well, well, I'm just gonna turn off the the. Well, see, that's where the funk comes in. That's why where, where I'm from, Dayton, Ohio, I'm Atlanta, funk. funk. Too. We have love songs, really? but most of it is the yeah. funky dance stuff. Uh huh. You know what? I saw that dance move. There's an F for that move, all right, but it ain't funky. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, all right. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you, to your thank you guys, for wife. having me. Listen, a lot of fun. This man here, if you do not go to a show anywhere in town, and there's people that I talk about that I think are the top notch of musicians in this place, and they're never on the RJ top 10, they're never in the top 40 people if you see in weekly or whatever. It's always acts like this man right here. You gotta check this dude out. This is a Las Vegas local that gives 110% every time he goes out. And obviously I do the same, which is why I love you so much, bro. <laughs> Likewise, Right, man. so one of these days- I love you too, Trisha. Right, one of these days we gotta do a gig together and now. watch Sue. I'm sure you'll sweat more than I will, but <laughs> we'll take turns of who can sweat more on stage. Get a workout. Right. You know how it was going to be, bro. You know how it was going to be. But ladies and gentlemen, Treasure, thank you again for having yourselves with us, man. Thank Taking the time. For, thank, thank you guys you for having so me. Much. And of course, I want to give a shout out to the, the lady behind the man, the myth, the legend behind right there. She is the, she is the honey behind the musician. She just is not the, uh, the phonogenic person, at least not on, on the show. But she'll do it out there on social media. So if you got her stuff on there on Facebook, you'll see it there. All she right. Is, she is the CEO of Dreamstone. Yes, LLC. she is. 
Yes, I'm, she is. I'm just the president. There you go. <laughs> I heard that. All right. Well, uh, this is the end of our third segment. Thank Second. you for thank you guys. Our second God. segment. Right. Thank right. you for gracing our show. And we are uh, up next. Yep, is, is Mr. Mr. Les Warner, Warner, who is a famous, infamous drummer, and we're going to get him and talk about what he's on. Right. Uh, coming up soon. Coming up next. So this is Musician Loves Honey. Thank you very much, y'all. We hope you're having a good time. And we hope you're having a good time listening and watch us be a little crazy. So we're going to yeah. pay some bills. We'll be right back. Okay.